So as I'm looking at the crowd, I'm glad we have a really good turnout. And so first and foremost, I want to say the sisters are outnumbering the brothers. So any brothers who might be in the uh, the local area that's, that's filled it up, I'm gonna. First of all, Jazakallah Khairan for having us here. Again, my name is Brother Ali. The first thing I want to do is is to thank MCC for hosting this event. Because this event touches just everyone in this room. The topic. The topic actually touches everyone in this room. And no, it's called screen agers, tending toward the teen agers, but really we have everyone in this room is affected. Whether you're under the age of 13, whether you're over the age of 18. So Again, we have no cards going around, so if you have any comments that you'd like to, to bring to the panel, then we'd be more than happy to answer any of those questions. So, again, my name is Brother Ali Bishop. I am actually a mental health therapist at one of our Bay Area high schools in Newark, uh, Newark, high, uh, Newark Memorial High School. I am actually an independent therapist hired by the high school to come into the high school to do individual and group therapy with the high school students there. My, the end of a knowledge is to actually understand where you're getting this knowledge. So you need to know a little bit about the panel, who you're getting information from. So I am going to briefly, inshallah, let you know my educational background, and then I'm going to turn it over to Sister Hasai and then she'll talk a little bit about hers. So my background, I am actually a master's in social work. I actually did my undergrad at Sac State University, and I did my grad, my undergrad work in, in social work. The, the clinical track I took was clinical mental health. My field work was done in nonprofit sector in Sacramento, the majority of my work started in alcohol and substance abuse. And so when the film started to talk about addiction, that resonated deeply with me. Because what we see in addiction with computer screens and iPhones and gaming, this, this is exactly what individuals who are going through narcotic alcohol addiction. So, my whole background, my undergraduate was, was in the field of alcohol and, and, and substance use and abuse. When I did my graduate work, I did it at Cal State University, Cal State East Bay. Go Pioneers. All right. Um, thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm trying to lighten the mood, right? Just trying to bring everyone up. So, my graduate study, I actually did that in social work as well. So I'm a master's in social work. Again, I took the clinical mental health track. I did school-based mental health therapy. So one of my field placements was Kitty Alba Elementary School, where I was educated in play therapy, where I worked with young children who have been traumatized, victimized, and going through severe grief and loss, and I, and I was trained in play therapy where I would help these young children get through those trauma time, those traumatic times that they were facing in their lives. My second year, I went to the high school. And I wanted to stay in the school system because I wanted to make a huge impact, impact in the youth before they become adults. The high school that I interned in was the high school I am currently employed in. So the high school principal came to me and he said, the work that you're doing is so critical, can you be can you be with us full time? And I said, absolutely. So I have been now a high school therapist, independently contracted in the high school. So I am dealing with teenagers who are going through anxiety, depression, grief and loss. So I have heavy 
therapy work within the high school. And a lot of it is around social media. So I am I am very honored by this mission and the board of this mission to invite me here and hopefully be of some help um, as, as we talk about this subject. So that is about me. That's who I am. That's uh, now you know where you're getting some information from. The last point before I turn it over to Sister Inside, I want to I want to again thank MCC because this video we actually we did, Sister Hosai and I we did a panel at MCA in the South Bay. We did it out of this film. I was told that this film is over six hundred dollars to rent. So the Meshit cares so much about this community that it would spend six hundred dollars and some change to rent this film and then send it back to the producers. So I am just in awestruck that our communities are embracing this film, sharing this film, and discussing this film. And so again, I just want to thank MCC for having me here. I am now going to turn it over to my colleague, Sister Hussai, she's a fellow Khairan, and inshallah, assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam. Salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya'i wal mursaleen. Sayyidina wa maulana wa habibina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wa sallam wa sallam. I am uh, very honored as Brother Ali Mishin to be here with all of you. Um, Alhamdulillah, my background is not as uh, elaborate as Brother Ali's. I am, um, by profession, I, I used to teach. Now I'm a homeschool mother at home. But I also do, uh, I'm a mental health advocate, which I've been doing for several years. Um, my Myself and my cousin, Dr. Musa Sikandri, we started a website called Mental Health for Muslims about close to eight years ago. And since then, I've had, had the opportunity to speak to different communities throughout California and the country about various mental health issues. And um, many times, Many times those discussions have come back to this topic of social media and the concern that parents as well as teens have about mental health. It's not a it's not a mustard program if we don't have at least one interference, right? Mike interference. So, um, thank you. So uh, many times these discussions um, have you know centered around this issue of social media. I can't count how many private conversations I've had here in this community, in other communities here in the Bay Area and Southern California, with parents especially, many times really, really concerned parents, like what do I do? Do I indulge my child who's been asking me for months, uh, you know, for a smartphone? Uh, do I you know, let them on this particular app or should I say no? Um, you know, what kind of boundaries should I create? So there's a deep concern and it's absolutely uh, you know, there's reason for it. We know. We, we watch this film, but if you're paying attention at all at what's happening in our world, you know that there are absolute inherent dangers of social media, and it's our responsibility as parents to look out for our teens. So, you know, these, these uh, grievances and these concerns are definitely warranted. And I've also heard from teens who are really worried, or not worried, more so frustrated, I would say, frustrated at the fact that they feel that their parents are being too strict and putting too many limitations on them, or, and that there's a you know lack of trust in their relationship, and they feel um, like you know they really have no options, there's a lot of tension in the home because of this topic. So hearing from both perspectives has been really, for me, um, eye-opening because I, I can see where both groups are coming from, and that's why these types of events are so important, because what we're trying to do here is we're trying to encourage dialogue. One of the things, the generational gap that I think, you know, happens naturally between parents and children is that sometimes discussions stop, right? It's just my way, that's it, right? If you're a teen, does that happen to you, right? When you, when you bring up something and then the discussion sort of just ends, because parents obviously don't want to, you know, make the, uh, you know do do something or or, or uh, make the wrong sort of judgment call. So it's just easier to say, I said so, that's it. But that's obviously not going to fix the problem because if you know anything about this culture, you know that 
people find a way, right? So that's what's happening now. When, when you have full stop conversations that just don't go anywhere, then teens will have access elsewhere. And so that's where you see these problems now happening, where they're getting uh, can, you know, access to, to really harmful material or just access to things that they shouldn't be getting through friends, through school, through libraries, through all these different places that now make things available. So that's not a healthy approach um, to just end the conversation. So we have to be doing exactly what we're doing right now, which is talking. And that's why it's so important that we hear from you. Um, if you notice, there's a very sweet, I don't know where she went, one of the volunteers, mashallah, may Allah bless her. Um, she's been walking around collecting these note cards. And the reason why this is so important is because we have a mixed audience here. When it's just teens and it's just adults, we can, you know, have really clear, open conversations. But what happens naturally is that when, when we mix these groups up, people kind of clam up and they don't feel comfortable talking about certain things because you don't want to get in trouble going into the home, right? You don't want to say something you shouldn't say or admit something or whatever, or bring up sort of, you know, open a can of worms. So people just sort of tend to listen, but really the purpose of our being here tonight is we want to hear from you. So we've gathered a few different questions here, but I really encourage you, if you, if you are a teen and you're struggling with this topic at home, and uh, if you're seeing different, you know, you, you feel frustrated, you feel um, that there's really no uh, respect maybe for your opinion and for your, what you want, please open up to us because we won't, you know, there's that anonymity that, that's afforded to you here with these note cards. We don't know who you are, but we can address your concern here. And similar with parents, if you feel like this is a real issue in your home and it's causing a lot of problems with you and your child, you feel like they're slipping away from you, inshallah we will do our best to help you um, today in, in this discussion. So um, before we, we, we sort of get started uh, you know, in, 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 in presenting some of the, the thoughts that we had about the film, um, we did want to get a chance to look at these, but are there any, is there anybody here in the audience right now who has something that they want to share, a reflection about the film, or something you know that you want to, to for us to address. Just if you didn't write a note card, but you're willing to, to stand up and say something, anybody? No brave souls out there. Okay. Yeah. Oh, we do have a hand. Yes. I, where is that hand? Did it go down? Did you change your mind? <laughs> All right. Yes. Bismillah. In the back. Yes. I will do my best to hear you. Just project your voice, yes. And we'll we'll look through these in the meantime, but I, we want to get your get the dialogue going, so we don't want to stop. Okay. So, um, stopping at this point is a little hard for me because he's at almost an adult. Mm. And um, I don't want to come across that he disrespected me. Right. Is he here tonight? Yes. He here. He's here. Yes. Have you had a chance to talk to him about the film at all? Uh, I think he watched it. Okay, good. Yeah. Well, alhamdulillah, that's a great first step. So I applaud you for coming here and I applaud him for coming here because, mashallah, that shows willingness to at least, you know, open and, and be willing to hear you out. I encourage you, if alhamdulillah, you, you did bring your child here, this is a great, you know, fertile ground to really start talking in a mature way. Um, you know, in a way where you really respect your child. Sometimes what happens, and it was actually brought up in the movie too, right, that parents we get so authoritative because we're afraid, right? We're afraid that our children are going to do something harmful, that our tone becomes authoritative, right? Which is what I was hinting at before, where it's just like, no, I, that's enough. I don't want you to do it anymore. That end of subject, right? And what, do, what that does is it undermines the intelligence, right, of your child who is no longer your baby, right? They are growing. And from the Islamic perspective, the onset of puberty is when they really do become adults, right? And so obviously, you know, there's adolescents and all the different physiological changes that they go through that, you know, fully develops their, their mental capacities and all and whatnot. But you still treat them with the same dignity and respect that you would anybody else. And so what I would encourage is to use this as a as a an opportunity to really encourage 
you know, thoughtful dialogue, which is not just to say, well, now that you saw the movie, you know, you, 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 did you see, did you see what I've been telling you? You know, I kind of come with that, you know, well, I told you so kind of attitude, but more like, what did you think of the movie? What are your takeaways, right? When you, as the parent, I think, you know, give that, encourage that dialogue from that respectful place, your child is going to feel heard and listened to and validated and then hopefully it's reciprocated, right? When it's your turn to discuss and you can say, well, you know, the, the takeaways that I got from the movie or what was really concerning for me is this and this is my fear, that they really now feel like they're talking to some, it's a, it's a mutually, you know, respect, respectful discussion and it's not that you're talking down to them or you're at them, right? And so from that, then it's a matter of, well, let's find some compromise because I know now that you're 17, mashallah, you, you know the internet probably better than I do in and out. How, what do you think we can find a compromise where both of us are happy? Because as your parent, I, my, my concerns are real, right? I have reason to be worried. And, um, and I understand this is a new world, that you're, you know, your world is different than my world, and that technology is important to you, and that there's all these amazing opportunities with, with on, being online, I get that. But how can we bridge this, you know, and what, what compromise can we find? What are you willing to do to work with me? And see, now what you're doing is you're again, inc you're encouraging your child to speak back to you, you know, in that respectful, compromising tone, not in the pushing back, rebellious tone, right? That will naturally, you're gonna get when you're too authoritative. And that's what happens whenever, and I've seen this play out time and time again, when parents think, I'm gonna be tough, I'm, you know, the child will either, you know, push back and equally be tough, or will maybe, you know, play the part, but then secretly, this is where, you know, spiritually it's very dangerous because shaitan is right there. Shaitan loves nothing more than fitna. He loves nothing more to cause discord. So he'll inspire that child and justify all his feelings. Oh, your parents are so mean. They're so strict. They, they don't even respect you. Look at how they talk to you. They think you're nothing. They think you're dumb. They don't, you don't know anything. You should prove them right. You should go and, you know, find these back channels and do this and this and this. So Shaitan will get, you know, that's what he does. He inspires them to justify those actions where they start doing things behind your back. And at that point, you know, that's it. You know, the, commu the communication is broken down and the relationship will eventually go in, you know, in, in a really bad direction. So I really encourage open dialogue, respectful dialogue, um, encouraging you know, your child to really speak, not just to listen the entire time, but to speak and to hear them with true intention of like, you, what you say matters to me. I'm not just hearing you to, you know, to formulate my response to you because I already have my mindset made up. Don't do that. Walk into that discussion with a really open mind, and inshallah, it'll be mirrored back to you, inshallah. Jazakallah khair for, for bringing that. I'll let Ali also please respond. Sure. Yeah. Sorry, um, I just wanted to, that was a really good question. Um, one of the things that I, I find uh, working with my students and my parents, um, when I'm doing individual therapy, I do a lot of collaboration with parents, and a lot of the um, issues are exactly what uh, the sister mentioned. So one thing I would talk about is just healthy boundaries. And what healthy bound what boundaries are, are just rules, right? And so whenever, um, if you if you if you have a teenager who's driving, right, and you invite them a car, you know, Allah love you bought them a car. Now we got to talk about healthy rules about driving the car, right? And it's the same thing with a cell phone. It's the same thing with computer screens. You buy them a computer screen. You give them a video game. A lot like that, right? But we got to have some rules, right? So I talk a lot about healthy boundaries. So I always talk about two types of boundaries, right? So we have our flexible boundary, which it starts with yes, but, okay? Then we have a firm boundary, which is absolute no, okay? So a firm boundary would be such, okay, I'm giving you an iPhone 8. Great, Allah, I got an iPhone 8. This is amazing, right? But the thing of it is, there's a firm boundary. You cannot have your iPhone in your bedroom, right? That's 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 firm boundary. Here you go. Here's your phone. Congratulations. You've been asking for it. Love it. But there's a firm boundary. Eight o'clock, you turn your phone in, and there's no argument. There's no debate. There's no discussion. Right? That's that's what we call a firm boundary. Flexible boundary would be, 
you kind of earn it, right? You can move your, a parent can move their boundary in, right? So it would kind of look like, you can have your phone at six o'clock, and then all of a sudden, you know, the, the child says, well, what about till 6.30? You know, let, can I at least do it at 6.30? So they're pushing against the boundary, and you're like, okay, you've been really good about your phone. Okay, let's push it to 6.30 on the weekdays. But again, 8 o'clock, no, no phone in, in the bedroom, right? So you move one boundary in. Now, when you move a boundary in, you have the right to change it back. Okay, I, I didn't get the behavior I was looking for, or, you know, maybe you slipped up somewhere else, and I want to move that boundary back. I'm going to move that boundary. We're going to put it back to 6 o'clock. Okay, so that's, so again, just talk, because the, the film kind of discussed boundaries, but we always throw boundaries out there, but we don't really define what boundaries are. So as parents, I want you guys to have good, healthy boundaries. If you have good, healthy boundaries in any relationship, you're going to have a good, healthy relationship. So I'm hoping that that will help some. Um, a lot of our, our questions as I'm reading are, are around cell phone usage. And so I just want to read one question. Um, it said, why did you guys show this film? Screenagers, uh, when you guys are telling us and the children and adults that you should be using less technology. Um, and it's a really good question because I like it. It's very blunt. Technology is a tool. I have a phone, right? But I have to be, I, I use it as a tool, right? Sometimes I use it as entertainment, right? But I'm using it for a purpose. And so we're not saying, and I don't think screen majors even said it, we should get rid of technology, right? We're immersed in it. It's very useful, it's very helpful, but we have to find that balance, okay? So it's not getting rid of it completely, but it's not being so immersed in it that it's, it's, it's lowering our, our grades, it's, it's affecting our relationships in negative ways, and so we have to find that healthy balance. And so that was just one of the questions, and, and whoever wrote that, may Allah bless you for being so blind, so direct, and uh, I, really, I really wanted to make sure I read that question. So, I'm also going to read some of these questions because they aren't, Mashallah, we got a good stack. You guys came through. Thank you. And we're going to try to get to as many as we can, but there are a lot of common questions. This one I really appreciate because it kind of talks about what I wanted to touch about today. But someone asked, why do you think people are still on their phones after the whole movie? <laughs> Another really fun question, really good question. Um, before uh, coming here tonight, I actually was listening to a few different talks, and then I, I read some, some stuff that was really fascinating to me. Um, I read about a study that was done on boredom. And the study was so fascinating because it said that in the study they found that one third of, or no, two thirds of men and one fourth of women preferred pain over being bored. So they were actually, uh, you know, in the study they were watching a film that was kind of boring and they were given this electric shocker system. And, you know, two thirds of men and one of, uh, fourth of women were shocking themselves throughout the movie because they were so bored, but they actually preferred pain more. And I think this is something that our teachers have talked about too, that the problem with what, what, why social media especially and our phones and, and, you know, is getting out of control is that we're basically avoiding, you know, being alone with ourselves, right? It's, you can pretty much do anything and everything. You can watch films, you can listen to music, you can, it's just so distracting, but what is it distracting us from is the question. Right? What is it distracting us from? It's distracting us from really just sitting with ourselves and allowing ourselves to think, to contemplate, to reflect. What, what, where do we even get time to do this anymore? If you really think about the day-to-day -day life that mo lives that most of us have, from the time we wake up and to the time we sleep, there's constant bombardment, right? Of images, sounds, voices, uh, one of the things, um, I don't know if any of the moms are, are like me, but my, I'm, I'm with my kids, alhamdulillah, at home, and I, I teach them, but there's times when I really need to focus, and so one of the things that really kind of drives me crazy is when they interrupt 
my focus, right? Because I'm like writing or I'm working on something, and then there's just constant just questions. Mommy, 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 right? No, get this, mommy, mommy, mommy. And and I always tell them like, you're hurting, like it hurts my brain because I, I, I can't focus. So but this this is really our reality all the time. We're constantly distracted and bombarded. And so what the phones have done, it's actually given us sort of this customized way of just choosing what we want to distract ourselves with, right? We're not subject to uh, just sitting in a space and doing nothing. We can actually do something that we enjoy and we like. But really, from a spiritual perspective, is this healthy, right? From a, from from knowing, you know, if you, uh, inshallah, I mean, just being Muslim and having uh, heard, I'm sure, many uh, talks on the subject. But the importance of dhikr, right? How important is it for us to actually be thinking and contemplating and remembering, right? Remembering who? Remembering Allah Subhanahu and remembering why we're here, what we're supposed to be doing here, our whole purpose. So this is really a big problem, and it's one of you know the things that I want to talk about, which is looking at this issue not just from a practical like oh we're here in 2018, Americans, teens, you know parents, kind of from that angle, but also from the angle from a spiritual perspective. As Muslims, how is this affecting us? How is this affecting us from a spiritual perspective? To be constantly on the phone. So for the teenagers out there, it's one of the things that obviously your parents are concerned about, is that this is so distracting that you're going to be seeing things and hearing things that are harmful for you spiritually, because everything and everything and anything is available to you. And as parents, we know this because we were, you know, we, we grew up in this age of, 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 of knowing what it's like not to have social media and seeing uh, what, what life has turned, uh, you know, into with social media. So our concerns are real. that there is that potential that this could really hurt your spiritual heart. But even for us as adults, you know, we have to admit um, our own addictions, right? How many of us also have addictions to our phone? We have to be real and just, you know, really break it down and say, as this question asked, even after watching this movie, why is everybody still checking their phone every two seconds and checking their Facebook or their social media? What's going on? It's because, again, this is now a spiritual problem. We've talked about addiction, we've talked about all that, but we have to be willing to really look at it at, from that angle of, of how is it affecting my spiritual heart? Am I even reading Quran as much anymore? Am I doing dhikr as much anymore as I used to maybe 10, 15 years ago? If you've seen a dip in your own spiritual practice because you're constantly connected to this, that's cause for concern, right? So, inshallah, this discussion affects all of us, even though, you know, I, I hope the, you know, the aim of, of some of the parents here is, wasn't just, oh, get through to my teens, but it's honestly for all of us to self-reflect, myself included. Every, you know, I had a, you know, a friend recently commit to just removing herself completely off of, of social media for, for spiritual reasons, and I really commended her for that because she recognized in herself that this was a real problem and she wanted to basically change that. So how many of us are willing to do the same? How many of us are willing to cut ourselves off? Get off WhatsApp, get off Facebook, get off Instagram, Snapchat, right? Raise your hand if you guys are on all of these. Raise your hand if you're on Facebook. Let's just kind of get, it, get to know each other. I'm on Facebook. If you know me, you know I'm on Facebook, right? How many of you are on Instagram? How many of you are on Snap? Be honest, how many of you snap today? Like you snap. You snap stories, you snap what you ate for lunch, your coffee, what you bought, right? MashaAllah. Okay? I mean, you see it. We're all in it. We're all in this together. So I hope that this, whatever we share today, you really understand that it's for, and I see how for every single one of us, uh, even us up here, to really look at how is this affecting us spiritually. Because we can talk about all the other stuff. But that is the biggest concern we should all have, right? If it's distracting us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from contemplating uh, things like death. I mean, how many of us think about death anymore, really? Right? How many of you think about death on a daily basis? Like, seriously. MashaAllah, that's very good. May Allah bless all of you and continue to to uh, increase you. But that these are important reflections, and it's not to be morbid. No, this is from our from the sunnah. We, we remember death because it reminds us of our purpose. But sometimes when you're so caught up in, in you know, looking at the world through this lens of, 
you know, just life and there's so much vibrancy on, on social media, you can forget that death is imminent for all of us. So, alhamdulillah, but this question I thought was really relevant, that even now, after watching this and hearing information, we still can't help ourselves. It's because we're avoiding that really important discussion with ourselves, which is just being alone and being comfortable being alone. <laughs> I have uh, a lot, of, so we have so a lot left, but we have so many note cards from all of you, and so what I'm trying to do, because I we're not going to be, because we're really asked to be done and wrap it up at nine. Um, Sister Hussai and I actually talked before we even started. What we'd like to do is stay an extra half an hour privately. Um, I can, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of set up over here. If any of the youth, I would really prefer the youth. Uh, because I want to give them a voice. Um, what, I, what I'd like to do is, is give anyone uh, half an hour, private, you know, just talk to me one-on-one. -on -one. Um, no parents allowed, right? So don't bring your mom over. Don't bring your dad over. Just bring, if, you, if you're a youth and you want to ask us a question, I'll be over here. I think Sister Hasaya is going to be here available for half an hour. Um, Allah swears by time, so we want to respect time. And so we've been asked to kind of go up till nine o'clock. Um, but one of the things that uh, it's 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 a it's a very prominent theme in the note cards is addiction. Um, I've seen the word throughout many of these note cards. So I just want to touch upon addiction. Okay. So there's actually signs of addiction that I wrote, and I'm actually put, I put it on my cell phone. There is, so it's it's a tool I'm using, right? So some of the signs of addiction that I've seen in in substance use. And also, too, in, in, in screen addiction, a sense of fatigue, migraines due to intense concentration or eye strain, carpal tunnel, poor hygiene, right? You're not, you're not bathing, you're, you're not taking care, you're not brushing your teeth, right? Because you're always on the game, right? Or you're always on the screen. Pro-social, um, I'm sorry, so um, these are just a couple that I want you guys to think about, right? So there's many others, but also too a dip in your attitude, right? So when, when dad says, put your phone away, and then all of a sudden you bite back at dad and say, well, I only want it for a minute, right? You know, your attitude changes. So these are signs that, you know, there might be some addiction issues, all right? So we're, my job is to give you something, right? I wouldn't be doing my job as a therapist if I can't give you something that you can't take out of here. So one of the things I want you guys to think about is positive reinforcement and negative reinforcement. Now, when it comes to the youth, I deal with high schoolers all the time, so I'm always trying to motivate them or, or help parents motivate you know, their students to do better. Positive reinforcement, what that means is I'm going to give you something if you do something, or I'll give you something if you did something. Negative reinforcement does not mean hitting, does not mean, it means taking something if you do not do something, okay? Research has found that negative reinforcement does work, but not as well as positive. So I encourage, and I do this with myself when I was in grad school, I had so many papers to write, I had so many presentations to do. When you get into grad school or you go into your doctorate program, there is intense things that you have to do, it's very, timely oriented and there's a lot of pressure. So you have to motivate yourself. So I actually had to do this myself. I would say no screen time for myself unless I wrote two pages a day. Because I'm always writing papers, 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 right? So I was not wanting to do that activity and so I was actually distracting myself, right? I was having more fun watching a movie or you know video gaming or whatever. So I actually had to reverse it. So I used positive reinforcement for myself. I get a half an hour because I love PlayStation, right? That's, that's what I do, right? So I would give myself a half an hour of PlayStation if I wrote two pages a day. And then when I did that, I was hard on myself. And I even told my wife, I'm a grown man, I told my wife, I said, don't let me play unless I knock out my two pages. And I knocked out my dissertation in a matter of a month and a half. And my, my peers within my, my cohort, they were shocked. They're like, how are you doing this? Why, what are you doing? And I'm like, it's positive reinforcement. Did you guys not learn that in Behavioral Psychology 101? Right, that was a class we all took together, right? Positive reinforcement. So I'm giving this to you now. Think about it. Positive reinforcement. What can you do for yourself? What can you do for your kids? Give yourself something for doing something. 
if that makes any sense at all. So we're going to be wrapping up real soon. I just want to personally thank, I'm going to give the microphone over to Sister Osai for her last comments. I just want to thank all of you for taking your time. Here it is, Friday night. It's 9.30, or actually it's 9. And um, you guys could be doing other things. But you guys decided to be here tonight and talking about this, and especially our youth. I see so many shiny faces, and I just want to thank you for just having this conversation with us. So on my behalf, assalamu alaikum. I'm going to be here uh, till 9.30, 9.45, 10 o'clock if you need me. I'm here for you. So just come find me, okay? So assalamu alaikum. Um, I did have a few questions here that were kind of all similar. I'm going to, I have some closing remarks too, but I want to get to these because they're clearly written from children. But they're all the same. Um, why do you think parents tell us to just decrease screen time if they are on their screens just as much as us? Uh, what if your parents are on their laptop 24-7 and they say they're just working, is that okay? Um, your dad tells you to put your phone away, but then they go and they on the phone because that's what they, you know, what do you do about that? So, you know, the kids are paying attention. I think for the parents in the room, as we all know, kids model behavior that we show them. So if you're going to say, you know, don't do this, but then you do the same thing, it's obviously confusing. So you have to be willing to open that discussion. And for the children in the room who see this type of behavior, um, it is important to know that obviously adults and children are different and our lives are different and many of the adults uh, you know especially living in this area and you know in this time uh, do have to work on their computers and on their phones so if they're working it's not the same as playing video games right or playing uh, you know words for friends or checking Facebook so you kind of don't just you know make it all one thing like you know like it's all the same you're just on your phone all the time but actually you know um, consider the fact that they truly are doing something important and uh, maybe that's just a discussion that for all the families here that you have to have I've had that with my children my children have definitely pointed that out to me like mom are you on the phone and then I explained to them I actually and, and this is just advice as a parent I am very open with my kids so I tell them everything I, I show them I'm like listen this is what mommy does mommy's a writer I write I like to write a lot so where do I write I write on a computer here's my files you can look at my folder you can see and then they get so caught up with like all the words I've typed out you know and they're like wow you type all those words I'm like yeah it doesn't come easily you know so so they get it but when we just say I'm working it's just you know it's kind of dismissive right and this is where we have to be more respectful of how we speak to our children it's so important that you open your conversations and are open to answering their questions with respect especially when they're young I think one of the tragic things that we do as parents is treat little children like they're nuisances all the time. You know, just stop asking so many questions, what do you know? That's so rude and mean and it's not part of the character of the Muslim. The Prophet honored everybody from old to young. He would sit and talk to children. He would, you know, get, come down to their level and speak to them eye to eye. We're very, it's just a really unhealthy part of some of our cultures and the culture, the greater culture, to just treat children that way. So if you do that, why are you surprised when they're teenagers and they're slamming doors in your faces, right? Or just shutting you out? Because it's, you, it's again, what you teach them is going to be mirrored back to you. So if you are respectful with your children from a young age, inshallah, they will respect your uh, rules even. They will follow the rules and they'll, they'll, um, they'll be mindful to not hurt you and not to d disappoint you because you were so careful with them when they were children. So that's just a, just a general nasiha about really watching the way you explain the rules to your kids and just your general tone. Now, as far as closing remarks, as Brother Ali said, you know, I, I would like to give you some takeaways. So what I mentioned before is from looking at this from a spiritual angle, I, I, you know, there's three components of what I say call digital literacy from an Islamic perspective. And I encourage all of you to really like just start being more literate about what's going on in the world. If you're not on social media for personal choices, I respect that. But that doesn't mean that you can't know about what's going on on social media. So there's you know, a difference. You don't necessarily have to participate, but you should absolutely know how they work. You should know how Instagram works. You should know how Snapchat works. You should know how Facebook and Twitter and all of these other WhatsApp, all these other apps that kids are into work. Because when they come to ask you, 
If you don't know, then they're not going to look at your opinion as having any credibility. What do you know, right? But if you're like, actually, yeah, the reason why I don't want you to go on Instagram is, FYI for parents, just in case you didn't know, one of the apps that I think is probably the most dangerous out there is Instagram and Snapchat. Why? Is because not only do, you, do your kids have access to, you know, they can befriend whoever, but there's pages that are called like the Explorer page, right? Which is, which is, you know, the algorithms of these apps, they basically look at the friends that your kids are connected with and look at what they're looking at, and then they put together a screen full of images based on what everybody else is doing. So it's not just your child's behavior, it's it, that the, 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 the impacts what comes on that page. It's the behavior of everybody they're connected with. So there can be very clearly pornographic pictures on there or just content that's really inappropriate that your child might have never even knew about, but just one swipe on a different button will expose them to that stuff. So you have to know this stuff. That's what I mean about digital, di digital literacy. Knowing how apps work, knowing how to navigate the web, um, and just being, and knowing what the digital footprint is. So when you're having discussions with your children about why it's so important that they control their behavior, that you under, that you can explain to them that their future could be impacted by their behavior now. You know, job prospects, marriage prospects. If you post a picture online when you're 15, it could come to haunt you later when you're 23 because someone sees that image and goes, oh, no, 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 I can't marry into a family like that, or I don't want someone working in my company who is able to do that, right? These things happen to people all the time now. So understanding what the digital footprint really means and explaining that to your child, and then all the different dangers of scam artists and things like that. So it's really important to know internet safety and security. And then social media, health, mental health ramifications, which is what we talked about, or what the documentary really talks about, what's going on with the brain, getting addicted to these things, how it affects you know, just the pleasure centers, the, the frontal cortex, the dopamine, all of that stuff that's affecting the brain of your young adolescent children, the developing brains, how it's impacting them, how it's gonna possibly you know, uh, lead them to, to addictive behaviors. It's so important that you know that. And then the spiritual ramifications, which we talked about earlier, how it affects your, your spiritual presence in prayer, in, in other areas that where you should be really be able to focus. If you have your brains all over the place because you can't wait to get to your phone during prayer, this is a clear problem. But these are the types of conversations that you should talk about when you're bringing up your concerns to your children because they matter and they're, they're based on, you know, their studies, there's, there's things that you can really uh, back up instead of just saying, because I said so. So, inshallah, increase our literacy is really important. Um, we do have, like uh, Brother Lee said, so many questions. Unfortunately, we weren't able to get all of them. But if you do want to talk, whether you're a teen uh, or a parent, we're here, inshallah, for any discussion. So, bismillah. Jazakumullah khairan uh, again for all of, to all of you for coming and staying this late. May Allah bless all of you and protect our children, inshallah, and, uh, and this wonderful community. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.